Welcome back to Extra Time on the Thursday. The tech stocks is rising about 2.5%. Everything is on the 20%, 10%, 11%, 50% rate uh, stock rise again for a third day running. But there's still some stocks which I still think is good value. If I still have money, I'll buy them. This is what my analysis is. So the first one is Pinterest. Pinterest is looking great at 71. Pinterest earnings for Q4 2020, spectacular. They're really gelling it together. The algorithm is working. The, the cost of uh, expenditure is coming down and revenue and users growth is really, it's rapidly increasing. 71 is too cheap. They should be sitting at 80 as per norm and they should be pushing to the next ceiling of 90 and 100 in the next two, three, four quarters. That's where Pinterest is heading. And if 71, I think it's still cheap to jump in if you missed the boat at 60 last week. 71 is still fairly reliable to get in. The second one is Farfetch, luxury companies that sell secondhand or pre-owned uh, luxury iconic brands like the Jordans, the Dior's, the, 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 the Louis Vuitton. And sitting at 59 is fairly cheap. It dropped to as low as 52 last week. I did grab a bit on the dip. Sitting at 59, I would still grab some because I think that Farfetch should be a $70 stock. Okay, $70 stock going to 2022, it should be fetching that $100 bill. So Farfetch sitting at 59 for a company who's... Um, a gross profit margin is so high. They're one of those companies where they could sell a 500 sneaker, a 500 Jordan Dior sneaker for five grand to 10 grand. And that's almost like 10 times the original price. Simple business, but for its branding, for its feature, for its ingenuity, it's just perfect. So Farfetch is a good business if you want to own some luxurious stuff. Remember with the opening of recovery, when things are opening up, people want to wear their brand stuff. People want to go on the streets again. People want to go uh, out again. Young people, especially millennials, I think it's very unfair for them to be locked down for years. So Farfetch is a great company. I like it at 59 and it should be a $70 stock. Next one is SEA Limited. SEA Limited has gone to Mexico. They are heading in Brazil with the most downloaded apps. Sitting at 263 is just too cheap. I know they did drop to as low as 199 last week. I thought, buy, buy, buy. But, you know, so... I think 236 is too cheap. They should be a $300 stock easily at the end of this year. And who knows what they will be next year with the growth that's expanding with Asia, stabilizing with e-commerce actually exceeding the digital sales and also the e-payment system is starting to catch on. And the fact that they're expanding overseas, not just in Southeast Asia just now, they're going across South America to grab the market share. And who knows, they might be heading over to Africa. So it's huge, it's huge. Uh, sitting at 236, moving to 300, is a quite a substantial gain. So for those who still want to average now, I think SEA, I tell my patrons, I tell my patron one-on-one, -on -one, say, if you want to buy, keep buying on the dip if possible, because soon it will just leave the boat. The next one, Lemonade. Okay, Lemonade is one of the stocks that some Tesla bulls claim Lemonade to be as close to be exponential 50x stocks as Tesla. But Lemonade is sitting quite overpriced as well, 105. It's actually a $45 stock, but it's actually doubled more than double 105. But if you put in the valuation of expansion in Europe, if you put in the valuation of furthermore products in US, and how they'll be growing to the next 2 million, 3 million, 4 million customers, 105 is really cheap. If you want to hold it to 20, 30, where Lemonade will be a household brand where you buy insurances with a tap of a button for your pets, for your health cover, for your car, for your bikes, anything, travel insurance, that will be the one. 105 now is relatively cheap. Again, it's overpriced, but if you think about future value, then there you are. If you're young investors looking for future value, looking for multiple growth, I think Lemonade 105 is good because I think they should be sitting 120 as a per norm until uh, Q3, Q4 of the year. So 105 is still $15 away. If it dips, fine, buy on the average dip if you're one of those believers. Next one is AMD. Okay, AMD is actually lower capital compared to Micron, MU. How is it possible? A company that sells GPU, data center, CPU, uh, everything holistically, great CEO Lisa Su is actually below Micron who sells, sells memory RAMs. Uh, something is not right here. Huge business. Um, AMD, cut to the chase, should be a $100 stock. Should be a $100 billion company ramping up to a $200 billion company in the next 2025. You know, they're going an exponential rate. If it's not because of shortage of chips, AMD should be selling 
chips as fast as potato chips. That's all I can say. So with this issue, with this growth down to 70, 35% as per forecast 2021 because of this shortage, but if they, if Taiwan Semiconductor can ease this problem, this shortage is back history, then AMD should be running for 2021-2022. So $81, this might be, I feel, the last time you're gonna see the stock as close to $79, so 80, 81. So grab yourself some, I would grab myself some if you've got spare cash on the sidelines, but let's wait and see until I build up a bit more cash. I personally would buy this one first. Next two will be British stock, being proud of British person. I really like these two stocks and finally I'm buying to British stocks again. In fact, I bought them on eToro. So London Stock Exchange dropped as high as the 95, 90, all the way to 77, 75. And I thought, man, this is cheap. They broke the $200 moving average. And it's a slow, nice increase decline where they could easily increase about 10, 15, 20% every single year and pay the growing dividends as well. So London Stock Exchange is good. We have the post-Brexit era, post-Brexit, and our Chancellor Suna is deemed to think about finding ways to to trigger growth, to trigger and attract foreign investment into the FTSE 100, the FTSE 250. So he's trying to look at special acquisition SPAC stocks. He's looking at future blank check merger uh, uh, likelihood like what I've done in the US, which should be successful for 2020. So I think there's a lot of scope in the next year, two, three years from London Stock Exchange to grow even bigger. The next one is expansion. Experian. Experian is a credit checking company. It's the biggest credit checking financial company in the world. It's got a huge amount of data and great legislation behind them. So Experian has dropped. Its multiples has dropped. It's looking cheap just now. It's actually dropped below back to run about the August, uh, July period. And I thought something's going on. Because at the end of the day, with the recovery, with the gates opening, people are rushing. All these young people are going to be out there getting credit cards to travel. They're going to be out there. You know, young couples will be buying houses with all this new first-time housing buying scheme and then also people will be coming to get their new electric vehicles on rebate and they need credit checking so credit checking will be huge people are coming out shopping again and why is this experience down so i think it's a great recovery i think do not mess this stock i have bought some myself i think it's room don't expect this super multiple american style jump but look at the gradual maybe by the end of the year you should see a good at least 15 20 percent growth from where it is today so if you're looking for stable uh, stocks these two english british stocks will be the ones for you so this is me on my views on what are still cheap. I mean, there are lots of stocks out there which is overvalued, but this is the one that I like so far. This is the one that I shared with my patron uh, a couple days ago, last weekend, and this is what I'm seeing myself. So thank you very much for watching on this extra time for your time. I will say good night and hope to see you tomorrow, the weekend, and daily basis. Take care. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Please press the bell button. Ding dong. Finally, watch the recent video up here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.